the time has come. The time has come to officially take on, to tackle, to conquer, dare I say, to master the mass. Essentially, we're diving back into the Sarah J. Mass world. Diving back in, we're starting over from the beginning. I'm going to start with reading the Akatar trilogy first, along with 3.5. And then I'm going to dive in to the Throne of Glass series. And then I will pick up Silver Flames, read that, and then dive in to the Crescent City series. So we have a long way to go. A long way to go. Now, I did say dive back in because I have read a few of these books. I've read the first two in the Akatar series, and then I read the first three in the Throne of Glass series. Now, this was done as they were coming out, as they were being released, okay? I have a long way to go. So each video is going to cover one book, I hope that's okay. That also being said, this is gonna be full of spoilers. So there's your warning. So today we're gonna start with the first book in the Akatar series. A Court of Thorns and Roses. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I do remember that. I remember that our main character's name is Feyre and she has a very, dare I say, shitty family. Two sisters and a dad and I, I think they're all pretty much lazy or her dad's like hurt. Maybe his leg. I feel like I'm a, a psychic and I'm getting these readings. <laughs> when I'm just trying to dig back into my memory. And then she kills a wolf and Tamlin comes knocking on her door and he's like, Rawr, you're coming with me to my castle. She goes to the spring court and I think everybody there, very similar to Beauty and the Beast, every, everybody there is like under this curse where they all have like permanent masks on their face. Lucian, Lucian, is that from this book? Isn't there a character named Lucian? It's been a minute. It's been a minute, but we're gonna dive into this today. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, let's do this. So I'm on page two. Page two. Feyre is out hunting because she is literally starving to the point where she says that she can count a good number of her ribs. That's how starving she is, right? And she said, because she hasn't been able to find anything as of yet, that she knew the expression that would be on her two elder sisters. I remember her sisters being lazy from the first time I read this, but I forgot they were actually older sisters. I mean, they could be helping though, you know? Could not be me because I, <laughs> I'd say something. And isn't Silver Flames in the perspective of Nesta, who is one of her sisters? Is her other sister named Elaine? Is that, that's coming back to me. Ooh, she says, I'd be glad to end him. Sister girl wasn't playing. She wasn't playing. She knew what she was fixing to do. And she knew the consequences. So Feyre just killed this wolf. I just, I'm done with chapter one. <laughs> I barely made a dent, eight pages in. Feyre just killed this wolf, and you cannot tell me that she did not know what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was killing, and I personally think that she did it on purpose. And here's why I think that. So at the beginning of chapter one, she gets the warnings from the other hunters in the area. Giant wolves were on the prowl and in numbers, not to mention whispers of strange folk spotted in the area, tall and eerie and deadly. Which that alone right there should have been like your little your little warning that those giant wolves are probably not wolves if they're, you know, being spotted around also these tall eerie beings like Hello. Then she goes on to talk about how starving she is to the point where she can feel numerous amounts of ribs. Like when she touches her belly, she can feel the ribs. Like that is how gangly she is, okay? And then she goes on to talk about how she can't even remember the last time she noticed anything lovely or interesting or in, like she doesn't enjoy life. She is depressed. She is very depressed. And then she talks about the arrow. This arrow that she has owned for years, okay? This arrow that she has owned for years and she has never once used. No matter how many wolves that she's come across, she's never once used this arrow until today. After the little thing that the hunter says, and then she also talks about how this wolf that she spots in the woods, not only does he have like unnatural stealth, even as he inched closer in the brush, he remained unheard, unspotted by the doe. No animal that massive could be so quiet. To me, ma'am, that's another sign. That's, and then she like kind of argues with herself there for a minute. 
convincing herself, convincing herself. But then it is, so it talks about the arrow that she uses and how this arrow is made out of ash wood and armed with an iron head. So essentially, Faye's hate iron, but it was the ash wood that made their immortal healing magic falter long enough for a human to make a killing blow. Essentially. It also says that she'd be glad to end him. I don't know. Essentially, she takes this arrow and she kills this wolf and she wait. no, she, well, she hits the wolf. Then she waits a second, pulls another arrow out and does the killing blow. If I judged wrongly, my life wasn't the only one that would be lost. And then she just continues to do it. She don't give no fucks. She knew exactly what she was doing. She, she, wants, she wants them to come kill her and her family. She is depressed. I'm probably wrong, but that's just my, that's how, that's what I read. So I haven't read Silver Flames, obviously, because Nesta is the main character in Silver Flames, but I really hope she redeems herself because at this point, I don't know. <laughs> Feyre is just getting home with like the doe and the wolf skin and stuff and Elaine greets her and Elaine says, will it take you long to clean it? You know, because she didn't even offer to help. And then Feyre says, it wasn't that Elaine was cruel. She wasn't like Nesta who had been born with a sneer on her face. Feyre is saying Nesta has been cruel since birth. Because I feel like a lot of people take up for Nesta and say Nesta has only been cruel, you know, because of all the shit that they've gone through. But according to Feyre, Nesta's been cruel since birth. It says Elaine sometimes just didn't grasp things. It wasn't meanness that kept her from offering to help. It simply never occurred to her that she might be capable of getting her hands dirty. But she's an older sister. And how old is Feyre in this book? I'm gonna assume she's at least 18. Okay, I'm just gonna assume that. Which means Elaine is probably in her 20s. And you're telling me that someone that is in their 20s still is this dense? Be so fucking for real with me right now. I'm gonna use up all these yellow tabs for these annoying sisters of hers. The further into this book I get, which I'm not, I'm not far, I'm like 12 pages in. The further I get into this book, the more I cannot stand Nesta. I, I just, I really want to know how she redeems herself because even right here it says when she brings home the doe and the wolf, her dad's like, wow, what luck you had today in bringing us such a feast. From beside my father, Nesta snorted. Any bit of praise for anyone usually resulted in her dismissal. And then it also talks about how Nesta, so their father has a messed up leg and he carved his own cane or whatever to use to like get around and stuff. And it says that she likes to keep it out of his reach. It's giving, she's a bit. Okay, wait, so Feyre loves to paint, right? She loves to paint and on the dresser, she painted like fire for Nesta, she painted flowers for Elaine, and then she painted a night sky for herself. Is that like a little clue, a little hinty hint? Silver flames, flames. She painted flames on the dresser for Nesta. Does Elaine get with Tamlin in the end? Because flowers equal spring, spring court, spring court king. So Tamlin has just made his way barreling through the door and it describes him as being as big as a horse with a body somewhat feline, his head distinctively wolfish, and then elk-like horns curling from his head. So essentially, he literally looks like Beast from Beauty and the Beast. I know this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but he literally is described looking like Beast. It even says he has dagger-like claws and yellow fangs. And you know, Beast has those two like yellow teeth, his teeth is, you know? <laughs> My father climbed to his feet, grunting at the pain in his leg as he bobbled. But before he could limp toward me, I repeated, I killed it. The beast, who had been sniffing at my sister, studied me. I squared my shoulders. I sold its hide at the market today. If I had known it was a fairy, fairy, fay, whatever the I wouldn't have touched it. Liar, he snarled. You knew. You would have been more tempted to slaughter it had you known it was one of my kind. True, true, true. Can you blame me? <laughs> like I said, she knew what she was doing. Is it fairies? Fairies. Fairy. Fairy. I know a fae and I know a fairy, but what the shit is this? Because these big old beasts, I feel like they're too manly to be called a fucking fairy. So I've made it to chapter six and I know I've read this before. It has been some years, but I have read this before. I do not remember why we dislike Tamlin. I don't remember. And as of right now, I don't dislike him. He's done nothing but, well, okay. <laughs> They've just made it to Prithian. And first off, first off, there's all this speak at how like evil the Fae are. And it's repeated over and over and over on almost every single page, which makes me think that that is not true. You know what I'm saying? Makes me, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not true. Obviously she, she 
some. So like, let's let's get over that. But also Tamlin, he like shows up to her house. Murderer, who killed him? You killed my friend. But instead of gutting her like swine, he's like, you can just come live with me in the spring court. I'll buy you art supplies. <laughs> Even the horse that they were riding off on likes him. The horse even showed him respect. What did he do that pissed us off so badly? I don't remember. Or did another man just come in and we're like, <laughs> you're old news. Hey, daddy. Like, what? What happened? As of right now, I'm like, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go make lunch. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go make dinner, okay? We're having smothered sausage and potatoes. It's so good. If you've never had it before, babe. <laughs> And then I'm gonna get back to this tonight, this evening. Mm -hmm. Couple things, just a couple things. Number one, these men, these fey, beautiful men, they're decades old. They're immortal. They're not gonna age. But these little human girly pops, they're not immortal. Feyre, we already know she gonna get it on with at least two of them. But how does this work out? How does this, does he like pull a Edward Cullen and just bite her ass and she turns into a fey? Don't spoil me. I will read about it, hopefully my answers will be answered. My questions will be answered. And then, what's another thing? Feyre. You might want to tone it down a little bit, girl. You might want to tone it down a little bit. So like when Tamlin was knock, knock, knocking at the door and was like, who killed him? She was like, bro, it was me. Then she's over here talking to Lucian. And um, he says, how did you kill him? Was it a bloody fight or a cold-blooded murder? And this is her. I shot him with an ash arrow and then an ordinary arrow through the eye. He didn't put up a fight after the first shot, so he just stared at me. Girl! Girl. You're looking like the villain of this story as of right now. You are looking like the villain. Especially now that we know that these fae are not these ruthless, hateful, demonic type situations going on. You know what I'm saying? Like he's literally giving you a mansion to live in, girl. For no rant. He's like, just go live your life. <laughs> you don't even have to stay in here in my mansion. You can go somewhere else. You can go, you know, go to Fred's house. I don't care. Just stay in the spring court. Get you a hobby. And she's just like, yeah, I killed your friend. Let me tell you what, I would shit myself if I had to come across a bogey. I would shit myself and shit all over the back of the horse. She would be blessed, okay, that she was with Lucian. Which, okay, speaking of Lucian, first off, we love him. I love him. He is funny. My type of guy. So earlier when I was talking about the dresser and how like it might be foreshadowing to some things and I was like, oh, you know, the night court with the stars and then the flames with flames and what is it called? With silver flame, whatever. And then I was like, Elaine's is like flower. So it's going to be the spring court. Maybe it's Tamlin. Maybe it's Lucian because he's just funny. Tamlin is so nice though. Like so far he is so nice. I've read book two. I don't remember anything about book two. I can't even remember all the characters. I know we have Tamlin, Lucian, and then we have Resand, Cassian. There's another guy. I don't remember his name. And it, isn't there another girl who drinks blood from a goblet? Girl, I don't know. I don't remember book two. And I think my problem is, is I listen to it on audio and books that are like fantasy books or like, they, I just, I'm not good with audio. I have to read them physically. So I'm excited to dive into book two and revisit that and then go on to territory that I've never visited before. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I, we just encountered the bogey. They're headed back to the thing. He also kind of hinted around about Amarantha. I completely forgot about her. I completely forgot about the whole... I don't even know what it is. Was it a competition of something? I don't know. Girl, I don't remember. You know how many years it's been since I read this? Girl, I've slept since then. I've had kids since then.
So I don't even know if I talked about what this book is about, but this is a spoiler filled reading vlog. So I'm gonna assume that if you're watching this, you've already read this book. So I feel like it's fine. This book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and just reading this, there are so many parts that is so close to the movie that I just wanna go and watch Beauty and the Beast because that's my favorite Disney movie. Throughout the first part of this book, I wanna say like 80ish pages, when she kept referring to him as the beast, in my head, I was picturing the Beast from Beauty and the Beast and Belle as Farrah. <laughs> but which makes me wonder, was Resand um, Gaston? <laughs> is that who inspired him? Or is that who he was inspired by, Gaston? I don't know. As of right now, I am really enjoying Tamlin, okay? That's all I'm gonna say, because he's so nice. He's literally taking care of her family, which I don't remember. Do we get to see how exactly he took care of Feyre's family? Because he does say like they're taking care of, they're being fed. I do remember them being in the book again. Also, before we dive into my little mini book haul, because I bought some books, shut up. There is one little thing that is kind of not bothering me in the sense that it's gonna like knock out a star. She repeats herself a lot. The amount of times that we are told, they are evil, they are evil, they are the bad guys, they will kill you, they are evil, he is evil. Until she found out that they actually, or at least, you know, Tamlin and Lucian and stuff, aren't evil, then she kind of shut up about that. But now she won't shut up about the fact that they can't tell a lie. You can't tell a lie. He must be spinning the truth because I know he can't tell a lie. Oh, he's talking to me, he can't be lying because he can't tell a lie. We get it. <laughs> It's kind of giving YA in that sense because I feel like a lot of the times when you go into reading like YA or middle grade even, the author tends to repeat themselves a lot because they're kind of talking down, I guess, to the reader because a lot of the times the readers are children. Girl, we get it. <laughs> We get it. You do not have to tell us 87 times. We get it. The vow. Another thing, her mom. Her mom seems like a total bitch. Right? Her mom had absolutely no care for their education or for anything like that. Her mom didn't care for them, as she said. Her mom would rather pay attention to the neighbors than what the neighbors thought of her mom. And her mom paid attention to their dad, but that was that was about it. Her mom didn't care for the children. Why do you put your mom so high on a pedestal if she was that type of a person? You know what I mean? Why can you not let this vow go when you're an adult yourself? You're 19 years old. And if you're the youngest sibling, your older two bests of sisters can fend for themselves. And then you got your old pops, your old granddaddy pops. Girl, stop it. Get, stop, just let, let the vow go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Also, you know that scene where Tamlin brings in that Fae from Summer Court that's dying because his wings got literally ripped off by her who I'm pretty sure it's Amarantha. It made me wonder, like, does Lucian and Tamlin not have wings? They're fae, fairy. I thought all fairies had wings. Like, that's why they're called fairies, because they have wings. Because isn't there like a group of bat boys too? Wait, are they bats? Why doesn't Tamlin and Lucian have wings? Or do they have wings and it just hasn't been described to us? You ever thought of that? So I'm now at the part where they're just coming back from the Starlight Pond and that I feel like was the moment where Tamlin and Feyre officially became besties, became more than just grumpy and grumpy. You know what I mean? They're both nice to each other. It also opened my eyes to Lucian and the heartbreak and his life and the trauma that he's gone through in my heart. I really hope he finds his true love. I'm finally um, liking Feyre, I'm not gonna lie. For a minute there, I'm just like, how is this girl the main character through this entire series? She is a little Miss Stressy Depressy, you know what I'm saying? Never mind the fact that my yarn bucket is completely overflowing, I can no longer close it. Listen, I have this type of personality where I hyper fixate on things real hard, so I started another crochet blanket. So now I have Four blankets going. It's fine. I guess I can show you exactly what I'm working on. It is a granny stripe blanket and every other row is beige and then every other row 
is a color. I think it's gonna be super cute. Okay, it's been a few days, but we're back on our Court of Thorns and Roses grind, okay? I didn't read this weekend because my husband was home, and I don't know about you all, but my husband, he likes to listen to the loud TV, he likes to be loud, he likes to watch TV shows with me, we go eat stuff, we go do things, and it's a fun time, but it just leads to me listening to, <laughs> to audiobooks, really, when I have time to read. So, he's back at work, and we're gonna get right back to it but what I did do this weekend is make some annotation stickers and let me show you okay so here's an example of just like a laughing face I just like to draw little you know emoji faces in here but I annotate with pen and sometimes they come out looking a little wonky so I was like you know what let me doodle up some on my iPad and create little emoji doodle type stickers which is what I did so I have these that are like lovey and then we have some silly funny and then we have some moody stickers and my favorite one is this little pouting guy just some others here as well and these are all printed on clear paper so when I take the sticker off of here it'll be clear and it won't even look like a sticker uh, at first went in the book which is really cool and then because another thing that I like to do when I annotate is draw hearts and I have a foiling machine and I was like how fun would it be to have some colorful hearts so I did two different types of heart pages so one is just your basic hearts and this is done in a gold foil I did like a like a big one and a small one and then the other one is like this just some extra little heart things, you know? I did a shiny pink purple. All right, kids are preoccupied. I have my book ready to go. My Alani fresh, open, popped, delicious, fun times. And um, let's go on ahead and jump back into Prithian. Okay, that gallery scene, the gallery scene. At first, when I was reading about him, you know, showing her the study, I was like, okay, this is Sarah's version of Beast's Library. Nay, nay, ah, uh -uh, nay, nay, it's the gallery scene. He got the gallery all cleaned up and ready to go. Spiffity, spuppity, spoo. That is definitely beast's library i wish like low-key all of her books were like a little twist on a fair i know it's just this first one but i am having the time of my life kind of not comparing it but comparing it okay i knew he was taking that list of words for something but i don't remember him writing poems for her writing nasty <laughs> poems for her i'm sorry and he's reading them to her <laughs> So I've officially come to a pivotal point in the story. That is page 188, my friends. The page in which Feyre first meets Reese. And she doesn't know it's Reese, okay? She's at the, I know it's not called this, but it, in my brain, just for like the sake of my brain, my brain is calling it the Calamari, okay? She meets him at the Calamari, the Great Rite. And it's because these other lesser fae were attra attracting, no, they were like attacking her. They were probably about to S.A. her, okay? But her savior, that's her words, my friends. She calls him her savior twice. Standing before me was the most beautiful man I'd ever seen. And that right there, my friends, should have been a clear sign. Should have been a clear sign that Miss Sarah Janet was gonna um, sway us <laughs> to another side. She was gonna let us fall for Tamlin because as of right now, Tamlin is a good man. And yes, he told her not to come out to this calamari, to stay inside, lock yourself up, because he's smart and she's the dumb one. So far, she has been really irritating me. She has been making stupid decisions. She has been trying to gaslight us. She's been the dumb one, including right now when she left the house after Tamlin warned her, after she even said there must be some really dangerous people out and about because Tamlin has all these weapons on him, his actual armor, like his, you know, beast form wasn't strong enough to go out there alone like that, that he had to bring all these extra weapons. Shit must really get a little cray cray. And she still left the house, her little puny old human ass. Anyway, I just thought I would let you know that we've officially, <laughs> unofficially have met Reese. So I know Tamlin's been good to her this whole time. He's been good to her this whole time. It took a while. It took a while for her to even like, you know, this 
This right here, I'm only on page 189, literally the next page. This is love at first sight, lust at first sight probably, because the next page she says, everything about this strange radiated sensual grace and ease. His short black hair gleamed like a raven's feathers, offsetting his pale skin and blue eyes so deep they were violet. Even in the firelight, they twinkled with amusement as he beheld me. Then further down, okay, further down it says, his voice was a lover's purr that sent shivers through me, caressing every muscle and bone and nerve babe this was a clear sign okay now i'm conflicted we're still at the night of the the calamari the great right whatever you want to call it the night of fire they call it so many different things i don't even know at this point we're still at that night and tamlin comes to find her now he does talk to her and tells her that he was already with someone else because she was gone and he couldn't find her like he grabs her in the hallway and she says let go and he doesn't let go instead he like embeds his claws into the wall to hold her there and then like they talk and whatever but then he bites her and she's having this conflicting thoughts in her head like she wants him she wants him on her body she wants him to do the things but she also doesn't at the same time so i don't know that like that part is kind of conflicting to me he tells her don't ever disobey me again and she says don't tell me what to do after she slaps him i don't know and then she says i wanted the heart hardness of his body crushing it against mine. I wanted his mouth and teeth and tongue on my bare skin. Blah, 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 blah. And then he growls and then he walks away. It's conflicting because she doesn't even know what she wants. I'm sorry, but this is cringy. Tamlin down whipped out the fiddle. He plays a fiddle. <laughs> Tamlin and his musicians played such joyous music that I didn't think the world could contain it all. I sashayed over to him, my fairy lord, my protector and warrior, my friend, and danced before him. He grinned at me and I didn't break my dancing as he rose from his seat and knelt before me in the grass, offering up a solo on his fiddle to me. <laughs> Reese is mean to everyone but Feyre, at least so far. So he enters in the breakfast room as they're eating and you know Tamlin like makes Feyre glamour away and hide behind Lucian and anyway he's like low-key mean and he is making them beg on the floor both of them for him not to tell Amarantha about the mortal trash that is Feyre. But the thing is, is when he talks to Feyre, he's like, what's your name, love? I'm sorry, but if a man who is described to look like Reese talks to me like that and refers to me as love, I would simply no longer exist. I would pass away. R.I.P. Beth. <laughs> okay, like, I get it. I get it. But listen, Tamlin not only helped her family out when, you know, he took her essentially to Brithian, he fed and like housed her family for her. But he also healed her dad's leg. He healed her dad's leg without her even asking. He also got their money back that he lost without even asking, okay? And, oh, and I just hope that he gets, like, his comeback. You know, a little story later on down the line where he finds his happiness. Because if I hadn't already read book two and just being in the book community itself, obviously we know Reef Sand comes on top. Obviously. I, and I know, like I get it. He betrays us in book two. I get it. But in book one, he was just so good to her. I just can't, I can't get over that. <laughs> 
Also, okay, so then we have Nesta. At the beginning of the book, I despise Nesta. She was just very cruel to Feyre, you know, and cruel just in general. And now we have the Nesta who we learned that the glamour didn't work on Nesta. And then we also find out that Nesta tried to go and get her sister from Prithian. And that right there took the little notch from being way down here and ticked it up. It went from hating her to just disliking her. And then we find out that she's not with the Thomas guy because Thomas refused to go with her to save Feyre. So it went from hating her to disliking her to we're just neutral right now. We're just neutral, okay? I feel like Nesta's demeanor is just a very mean demeanor and can we hold that against her? I don't know, but I don't, I no longer hate her cause like just opened my eyes a little bit to the true Nesta and how she said like, cause Pharaoh was like, yeah, but you took money that I made as well, you know, cause they were talking about her dad and she was like, yeah, but I knew that you would go out there and get more if we needed it. And I also low key wanted to see if you didn't go get more, if our dad would actually step up and be a man and do the right thing and he didn't and therefore I hate him for it. She just has a lot of hate in her heart and I hate that for her genuinely so I do hope to see a good comeback come from her and I'm assuming we get a good comeback because she has her own book later in the series and I cannot wait to read that one. Anyway that's where I am in the book. Do doors open like this kind of creep you out? Because like in person it's not creepy but looking at myself in the view for... see what I'm saying? <laughs> So you know what I was thinking about this morning as I was getting dressed and ready for the day that looks like my glasses are crooked? It's mostly just this eyebrow is a lot higher than the other eyebrow. Let's not talk about that. But while I was getting dressed this morning, I was thinking about how this is a romance book. There's not been one part of this book where I've like had butterflies or was like, you know, squeeing, kicking my feet, doing that girly thing that we do when we read romance books. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. That hasn't happened in here. And honestly, if Tamlin died at the end of this book, I don't even think I would care. Like, yes, he's nice to her. He is very nice to her. I mean, I understand why, but he's nice to her. But other than that, I just don't get the actual romantic connection. Even her, like, confessing her love, like, to herself, really, because she hasn't really said it out loud. But he has he's told her he loves her but I, I just i don't know and so where am i going with this i don't know <laughs> anyway we're gonna finish this book today ow i just scratched the shit on my chin we're gonna finish this book today as of right now she's with her family still because she's left prithian and that's what we're doing babe and i know she goes back for like a competition situation right so we're back in Perithian and I really need to get some like decor or something move my chair around because I sit against this wall to like read my book and stuff so I'm updating you from here and I it's literally you see my yarn bucket that can't even close anymore and then a Kaiser I guess Kaiser could be could be my decor this whole time this whole time I'm sitting here thinking this book ends because there's gonna be a competition and Feyre is gonna enter the competition and it's like a competition held for the queen that hates her and then they find out that she has some kind of fey blood what am I thinking of because that's not this book so Feyre finds herself back underneath the mountain because she not back because she didn't, she's never been there before but under the mountain to go rescue the love of her life that is Tamlin because she's the biggest fucking procrastinator and she did not tell him she loved him when she had the chance. Obviously there was a curse. Has she never seen Beauty and the Beast? Like let's be real. <laughs> anyway so she's under the mountain and she has to do these three tasks in order to free Tamlin in the entire spring court and she can either do the three tasks or she can answer this riddle correctly which I don't know what the riddle is yet but now she's gonna be stuck under this mountain for three months in a cell you know what isn't Reese there let me read <laughs> okay so listen reese took up for her at the night of um the calamari whatever the hell it's called and then also when he showed up at tamlin's house he was nice to her even called her love now when amarantha calls him up front and says is this the girl that you saw with tamlin he says i suppose and then she says but did you or did you not tell me that girl pointing at claire who's dead and hung up on the wall was the one you saw and he did and was he trying to also lie for Feyre? Like, does he already have like a little thing for Feyre? Am I reading too much into this? I don't know. 
is when Amarantha calls Reese to the front and then calls Lucian up to the front to try to find out what Feyre's name is. First off, Feyre, you done took your precious little time telling Tamlin you love him and look where it's gotten us. Now you took your precious little time to say your little name and we already got Lucian hurt. And I'm telling you what, I'm telling you this right now, the fact that Tamlin did nothing and said no nothing as well when he had a chance, they pissing me off. Nobody, nobody, and I mean nobody, better mess with Lucian. Can someone please tell me why I am finally getting giddy? I am finally getting that like giddiness. And it's not for Tamlin. <laughs> like I get it, Tamlin is so nice. Or he was. Now he's acting like a bump on a log. But prior to this, he was so nice to her. But there was still no like romantic connection that I had for him. Oh, Reese. So she's like in the whole first task or whatever with that big worm. He's explaining to the fairy about how she's building a trap and how like the worm is blind or whatever. A green face fairy says like what's it doing and a deep elegant voice replied this time she's building a trap resand but the minion god relies on its scent to see resand answers and i gave a special glower for him as i glanced at the rim of the trench and found him smiling at me his violet eyes twinkled you guys, I swear to you, he is giving more than Tamlin has gave the entire first two thirds of this book. I think we've reached a pivotal point in the story to where Tamlin is starting to piss me off. Okay, and here's why. Lucian, who isn't even as powerful as Tamlin, Lucian has helped her and stood up for her more times than I can count. And Tamlin has done nothing but have a spark in his eye. Are you kidding me right now he did all of this stuff at the beginning of the book he went and like tore down the doors and he went out and killed bogey and all those other creatures and now he just sits there like a little puss boy with a gleam in his eye i could have sworn i've seen a trace of triumph on his face there versus lucian is literally putting his on line for you and he's not even romantically involved with you girly pop and tamlin is just sitting there you made me a lot of money you know i figured i would repay the favor it was reese that betted that she would win you guys <laughs> sarah knew exactly what she was doing I, it's just so weird <laughs> sarah knew exactly what she was doing because she was like, let me go ahead and throw in this guy who thinks he's all big and mighty and tough and somewhat handsome and make the readers kind of think that that's where we're going. And then I'm going to throw in a little plot twist. And by plot twist, I mean Resand, this tall, handsome, dark haired, violet eyes. You know, he's always smiling like he's and he calls her love or called her love. And like that right there is just swoon worthy to me. <laughs> And now he fed it on her and won all this money. And so he's down here trying to help her because she's running fever and on the verge of passing away. It's funny. Because <laughs> I look back and I laugh at myself because I'm telling you the first half of this book, I was like, why do we not like Tamlin? It's all coming back to me now because I know there was a reason why she goes to the night court, but I couldn't, you know, like goldfish brain. But it says, I'll heal your arm in exchange for you for two weeks every month two weeks of my choosing you'll live with me at night court starting after this messy three trials business and <laughs> sarah knew exactly what she was doing that's why she made the little da -da 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 scene with Feyre and tamlin comical she did that shit on purpose she knew ex she was like i don't want my fans to fall in love with this tamlin person too hard because once i rip the rug out from underneath that little silly relationship and introduce them to old baddie i don't want them to be too hurt <laughs> and then it's the minute that you're rooting for the guy he does something so idiotic so he she tells him to go to hell like she doesn't want to spend time in the night court and She's just gonna face the fact that she's dying. He literally takes the bone that is poking out of her broken arm and twists it because she won't take the bargain. Bro. Sorry if you can hear the loud sports in the other room but every time I try to do b-roll or whatever I have to stop it because then I have to talk to you about something and I was gonna wait but I was like no if I don't talk about it now 
Like I need to talk about it now. I need to talk about that page that I just, I need to talk about resand because baby. First off class, if you have your books with you today, turn to page 344. I will read from the top. They grabbed for me, but he bared his teeth in a smile that was anything but friendly and they halted. No more household chores, no more tasks he said, his voice an erotic caress. You notice how when she describes him, she describes him to be so attractive and sexy, but she doesn't really do that with Tamlin. Or maybe I didn't notice it when she talks about Tamlin. Anyway, let's continue. Their yellow eyes went glazed and dull, their sharp teeth gleaming and their mouths slacked. Tell the others too. Oh wait, tell the others too. Stay out of her cell and don't touch her. If you do, you're to take your own daggers and gut yourselves. Understood? Essentially touch her and die. Cause touch her and you're killing yourself, bro. I'm sorry. He is so good to her. Like Tamlin was good to her, but Reese is good to her on a whole different level. Like when he is told to be mean, he still finds a way to be nice. Oh, I got my answer about why doesn't Tamlin have wings. Apparently, I don't know if it's just the high lords, but they can choose what they want to be, I guess. Resan chooses to have wings. And he said versus Tamlin prefers fur. Okay, but wait, there's something else that I wanna talk about. And I don't remember if I talked about it in the vlog or not, cause I've been thinking about it. And sometimes I'm like, did I say it or did I not say it? So I'm gonna just say it here. So remember earlier in the vlog, I was like, Tamlin is so nice. He is just so nice. He's doing so many things for them. It, he is just so nice, like blah, 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 blah. But then later on, we find out the truth. We find out the truth about the curse and the fact that he needed to be nice to her because he needed her to break the curse. So he didn't kill her when he first found out she killed his friend because he needed her, okay? So there was never a, oh, he could have. No, he needed her, okay? That was a whole setup. And he took care of her family so she wouldn't find a way out to go back home because he needed her. I just feel like Tamlin is just using her or was just using her because now that he thinks that the curse isn't gonna be broken, he's being quiet. He's being a little bump on a log versus Reese is, I don't know. I'm just like, you can see where my like, I was like Team Tamlin, like hardcore. I was like, oh yeah, so nice. Oh. But now when she needs him, he's just like, in his throne of stone, sitting next to Amarantha in her black throne with her bitches. You know? Anyway, that's my thoughts. So Reese just got done licking Feyre's face. Licking Feyre's face face. I do not remember all of this banter between these two. All of these like things that he's doing for her and helping her survive and like, he's even feeding her hot meals. I don't remember it being this good. It's like from the point where we get all the information from Alice, you know, like after the whole, like she's sent back home and then she comes back to the shattered house and talks to Alice and Alice tells her everything. It's like from that point forward, it's so good. It's wild to me. It's wild to me that Tamlin is just sitting there, quiet as a mouse, literally not even helping. Even when his best friend was about to die yet again, a whole nother time, Tamlin just sat there. I'm surprised he hasn't pulled out his fiddle. Are you kidding me right now? And if and if Lucian doesn't get a happily ever after by the end of this series, my fists are gonna be out and I'm gonna be ready to fight. So that's how Feyre became a high fey. You know what? I'm not mad about it. I mean, I, I obviously, I expected it. I knew it was gonna happen somehow. I just kind of forgot, but I'm also not gonna lie, when that part happened, I did, I did shed a tear. The first person to walk up and do it was Tamlin's dad. And I felt like that was like their little truce. I was also really hoping that Lucian's brothers would, um, you know, you know, I was hoping, but sadly, maybe in another book. <laughs> Also, at the very end, when Reese was telling her goodbye for now, he like started to panic as he was like disappearing into the darkness. What a cliffhanger, what happened? Like, and why didn't they act like something was wrong? Like, why didn't she like, oh my gosh, let's go, like what happened? Why was he freaking out? Which makes me really wanna pick up book number two for my rating. I'm gonna give it a four star. The first time I read it, the second time I read it, and now the third time I read it, it has stayed a four star consistently across the board and here's why it's getting a four star the second part of this book like from the moment that she returns to prithian five star material i thoroughly enjoyed that the first part of this book it felt 
I don't know, it's like the writing wasn't 100% for me. The author, Sarah Janet, kept repeating herself and that was quite annoying, okay? That was quite annoying, but she stopped. She stopped doing that as the book continued. Also, I couldn't stand Feyre as well, the first half of the book. She just was like whiny, kept making really bad decisions, didn't listen to anybody, blah, blah, blah. And then once the trial started, she became a baddie and I like her. <laughs> Also, three times in this book, did what did she say? How did she word it? My bowels turned to water. <laughs> three times in this book, Feyre. Like, literally, girl. Anyway, that's me reading this book. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Annotating definitely takes a whole lot longer than I originally thought. I'm gonna have to work on that because I have many more books to read. How many more books do I have to read? 15 more books to read and my goal is to get them all read before her next release. I'm gonna assume next January. She's kind of been on trend with releasing at the beginning of the year. So, can we do it? 